Thank you. I'm going to go to the front row here. The gentleman in the red tie, please. Yes, thank you for taking my question. My name is Simon Ateba with Today News Africa in Washington, D.C. Um, exactly to the point that you just made, the fact that we have hundreds of billions of dollars available for investment, but that money doesn't seem to flow to low-income countries, especially in Africa. I would like to talk a little bit more about the situation in South Southern Africa, some of the policy recommendations and some of the steps that the World Bank has taken to address some of the issues there, including the food crisis, energy prices, and the rest. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So let me give you some basics. In our fiscal 2022, which ended on June 30th, um, w nearly half of the World Bank commitments were made to Africa. So that's a that's a change of that you know that's been happening over the years. A gradual shift in the in the uh, World Bank commitments uh, toward uh, fragile countries and in particular toward Africa. So we're doing uh, uh, it, it, so we've been expanding those programs as much as we can. Um, I'll, to your capital flow point, let me add one thought. Um, it, it, during the, when interest rates were being kept low by the world, there was a reach for yield. Uh, and so uh, it, it, investors were putting money into some of the emerging markets. But when you look at the data, it wasn't going into gross fixed capital formation. It was going often into government bonds in those countries. So if you think about the flow, it went from savers in the advanced economies to governments in the, in the uh, uh, developing countries and didn't actually create infrastructure and the and the uh, new businesses that are needed to to uh, increase production so one of the things we're advocating now is just that uh, the uh, countries uh, in the developing world and in, in particular in Africa uh, look to use this uh, th this challenge this crisis uh, going on to improve their structural policies in order to, so that they can produce more in their countries. I think to get there, there would have to be more gross fixed capital formation. That means the actual physical investments and uh, educational investments within the countries in order to have future growth. One other point is that that uh, crisis, and maybe we can talk about that with another question, but that, that overhangs uh, Africa, and I said in my opening why. You know, the interest rates are up, the burden of the debt is higher, and the currencies are weakening for quite a few of the countries, and the world doesn't have a technique now to provide debt relief even when debt is unsustainable. We've seen multiple countries trying to, asking the world community for debt relief and not finding a mechanism to do that. So that that's particularly relevant to Africa. Great.